What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Norn Rad 89 here. Continuing the Nightmare on Elm Street review series is now we are on to Wes Craven's A New Nightmare, which is the seventh installment in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. And this is one that is going to be kind of fun to talk about because there's a lot of fun stuff. Wes Craven returning for the first time in the franchise. Heather Langenkamp is back. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, but also on this rewatch, I noticed that there are some negatives, some glaring negatives. So today you're going to hear my positives, like I said, negatives, the rating, and then I'm going to send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. <laughs> So Wes Craven's A New Nightmare is definitely a storyline that was completely ahead of its time as this storyline is very meta as we are following Heather Langenkamp's character, Heather Langenkamp. She plays herself in this film. She's an actress and she's being haunted by dreams of Freddy Krueger and it's starting to affect her real life and her family life. We have a young actor playing Dylan, her son in this movie, and she has her husband as well who is a special effects artist for the Nightmare on Elm Street films in this film in this movie so like I said this film is very meta we have Wes Craven in here playing himself Robert England playing himself in here even Bob Shea so yeah this film story wise very ahead of its time so you got to give a lot of props to Wes Craven for that one key positive I also love about this film is the look and the design of Freddy obviously I have a I have a cult classics design right here this is Freddy Krueger's design in A New Nightmare. I love the trench coat. I love the tearing of the design, like of his face and everything, all that stuff. So even the Robert Englund performance, the Robert Englund performance is off the charts in this one. So yeah, for real, there's a lot to love about just in specific in general, Freddy himself. Like I said, it's very menacing. I like the design. I like the new look. So that is right up my alley. Also, I like the fact that we have some cool callbacks in this one to nostalgia. We have Tuesday Night coming back. We have Lynn Shea coming back. We have John Saxon. So a lot of cool callbacks to old cast members and previous films. So this is definitely a movie that roots itself in nostalgia. Is that always a positive? I don't know. I also enjoy our music and the score for this one. It's an homage and it calls back to the first film, but it has its own style. It's very new, like kind of grandioso, more like a just big on like band performance. Like it just feels bigger. It feels more cinematic and everything. And I like that fact because it definitely goes along with the cinematography and the look of the film. This is a really good looking Nightmare on Elm Street film. There's a lot of iconic sequences there's a lot of great sequences calling back to like when heather langenkamp is following her son dylan into the dream world through the sheets that's really cool looking one of my favorite scenes is when julie julie's death even though i it hurts my heart because that is a character that i don't believe deserved her fate at all but that Julie death calling back to the skin the cat scene with Tina in the first film. Yeah, that really sticks out and like is one of those moments that just oh, I can never I always remember that film that moment. And when I return to the film, I have to kind of prepare myself for that moment because like I said, this is a character that I just really felt like she didn't deserve her fate. This is also a movie that I believe gets better as it goes along. I would say we're going to talk about negatives when we get to negatives, but I would say this is one of those films that it's better to have that kind of movie where it's a film that starts out weaker but gets stronger as it goes along rather than having a film that starts out really strong and then just kind of peters out and by the time you get to the end you're like what what did we just watch so it's really better to have this kind of film but yeah there are kind of some other negatives we're going to get to when we get to that but yeah Wes Craven's A New Nightmare was definitely a new flavor something new to the franchise and you can tell that Wes Craven really adored and really loved this story and wanted to bring something new to the table because in terms of his creativity and his ideas he did not want to make any sequels to that first film this was all pretty much Bob Shea's idea to continue the franchise because they wanted to keep that money train rolling so let's get into some of the mixed and negatives because there are like I said some glaring negatives with this film and especially on this rewatch I would probably say this is probably like the 18th or 20th time I've seen this film and on this rewatch, yeah, there are some glaring negatives. One in particular that I really want to talk about is that, like I said, leaning heavy on nostalgia. That can be a huge positive when you use 
use it as just like cameos or having John Saxon in to have a really touching moment with Heather Langenkamp, having the others at the funeral, all that kind of stuff. But when you hammer home the fact that like we're going to call back this scene where, you know, in Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1, she gets stuck in the stairs and she has to crawl through goo. We're going to call back to the tongue scene. We're going to call back to quotes from the first movie like then it kind of just becomes like we're hammering you over the head we're hammering the the you know the audience members over the head with the fact that yeah Wes Craven's back Heather Langenkamp's back this is like the original crew come on like you know eventually it just becomes you're hammering us over the head with it and it doesn't become fun anymore another glaring negative is going to be the CGI there are some very dated CGI and graphic moments this is at that point in 90s where our ideas and the creativity that we wanted to put forth on screen the technology really wasn't at that level to match what the directors and writers and a lot of the people were coming up with so a lot of these early 90s like 92 93 94 like right in that cusp of that era you get a lot of really bad cgi graphics or 3d graphics because computers weren't really at the capability to match up with a lot of the stuff that was being written in terms of what they wanted to put on screen so yeah very dated cgi with this film i also brought this up already in terms of a film that gets better as it goes along but yes the first 12 to 15 minutes of this film i would say is a slog it's kind of you know very difficult to get through i would say it's not a strong opening first act in terms of when i think of the nightmare on elm street fan franchise there's a lot better other opening acts to a film but like i said this is a film that gets stronger as it goes along so i'm kind of, i'm kind of okay with it but like i said the first 12 to 15 minutes i noticed is a little bit boring we also got to talk about the lack of kills in this film i think this film only has two on-screen deaths and the rest are off-screen deaths so yeah this film in terms of the nightmare on elm street franchise i think this is the lowest kill count we've ever had of course that's not the main focus of, of this film this is definitely a film that roots itself in character trauma and more storytelling and more character development type stuff it's not really a slasher slasher type film like some of the previous other films but yeah we definitely need some more kills and some more other gore moments come on this is a nightmare on elm street film give us some more creative and some more gory kills but as you can tell this is just a big bag of mixed this is a film a new nightmare that i would say is the prime example of a nightmare on elm street film that has some of the greatest stuff in the franchise a fantastic Robert England performance, some good callbacks to nostalgia, a really cool new design and new storyline that we get to come across that we've never seen done before, but also some really huge negatives that, like we just talked about it, that are weighing this film down. So yeah, it's just a big bag of mixed, but in terms of my rating, we all must know, you. I know you all came here, what's the rad rating for A New Nightmare? Wes Craven's A New Nightmare is gonna get a six out of 10 in my book. I think just on the rewatch this time, yeah, just some of those negatives, they really did stick out like a sore thumb. This is much more a Nightmare on Elm Street film that I appreciate much more than I love. But these are just my thoughts and my opinions and all that kind of stuff. Please let me know down below in the comment section, are you a fan of new, A New Nightmare? Because like I said, this is a film that over time has gained a cult following and there's a lot of fans of this film. And like I said, I know why, because like I said, I can see and appreciate the vision and what Wes Craven was going for, but I think it was a lot more shooting for the stars you know kind of moment thing you know a lot of it didn't land but he was shooting for the stars and really wanted to bring something new to the franchise but let me know down below in the comment section please hit me up so we can discuss but also like the video that definitely helps out the channel subscribe if you're new to the channel and i also forget to mention this all the time but like share out our videos like if you like a content creator or you support a youtube channel please share out our videos, show a friend, show a family member, drop it on Facebook or something because us being able to do that lets us reach out to other audience members and connect with other people that we might not be able to connect with. So that really helps out all of us content creators. We really appreciate it. But you all know what's up and most importantly, have a safe and happy day. Peace out.